So today we take a trip to the borders to meet double British touring car champion John Cleland and it's an honour to be in his garage with these race cars that we see on show here. And well, there's a big meeting coming up in a couple of weeks so let's uh, let's get down to business John, we're here, we're here for an interview. Firstly, why have you decided to get back into super touring racing? <laughs> it wasn't my choice, my son Jamie found my old car on Facebook, we ended up buying it. It was the 97 chassis number one triple eight car. First raced, ironically enough, August Knock Hill in 1997. And uh, we've won more with it since we bought it back than we did in the time. So yeah, it's a bit of fun. Now, as we look across your garage here, you've got some beautiful race cars, but, but why have you picked the Vectra and the Cavalier? I, I'd spent my entire life with the Vauxhall team and they were always good to me. They always gave me up until about 98, 97, 98, a car capable of coming in the first, second or third positions on a podium in a championship, never mind races, in a championship. So I got on well with them. They paid me good money to do a job for them and I was quite happy to stick with them. So for the fans out there, the return of Gabriele Tarquini head to head with John Cleland at Knock Hill. What can these guys that are coming to Knock Hill for the Super Touring Festival, what can they expect from it? Uh, I think... Everyone that sees these Super Touring, because they, they love them because most people that are watching them now were kids at the time and just fondly remember this old era of, of all the drivers, the Frank Bielas, the Gabriele Tarquinis, the Will Hoys, John Clellans. And, and they were great cars to drive. They sound spectacular. They're much better sounding than the current turbocharged ones of today. But I, I, I think they'll be fabulous cars around Knockhill. We're also going to see you going head-to-head -head with Gabriele Tarquini, which is going to make a lot of people miss the eye, that's for sure. We know how fast Gabriele can be, but yourself, you must be looking forward to locking horns again with him. Yeah, I mean, uh, last time I locked horns with uh, Gabriele was when I was World Touring Car uh, Driving Standards Advisor, and I flicked him on the grid at Monza because he punted somebody in qualifying. Uh, I think we fined him and gave him a grid penalty as well, and he absolutely went off on some Italian rant until I showed him the video evidence, and then he realized that he had punted this guy off. So I'm not sure how that meeting is going to go well at uh, Knock Hill. So John, what are you up to nowadays? I'm a full-time car dealer, but then again, I've always been a full-time car dealer. All through my entire racing career, I would finish at Brands Hatch or Thruxton um, on a Sunday night. I'd be back in the office at half past eight Monday morning. I run a Volvo and a Jagger dealership nowadays, and that's what I really always did. I think it was good that it sort of bottomed me out and you know I'd maybe won a race at Brands or Thruxton or somewhere else and you get a bit carried away with yourself Monday morning I'm back in the office and I'm just a cab dealer again forget all that so that's really what I do full time a little bit of historic racing and of course getting the old Vectra out now and again and possibly the easiest question for you to answer today do you think you were robbed of that third touring car title? In 1992. <laughs> Which would have been the, sec the, the first or the second, sorry. Were you robbed? Were you robbed? Yeah, was I robbed? Absolutely robbed. <laughs> the, yes, there is no argument. I mean, it was a fraught event. It was really about me following Tim Harvey over the line, Will Hoy just in front of him. That would have meant the points were that close. I won the championship. Unfortunately, we hadn't banked on Steve Soper going to be a bit of an exocet missile and the rest, as they say, is history. I can bitch about it as much as I like. Harvey thinks he won the championship fair and square. My ass. <laughs> that championship was mine. No two ways, it was mine. All I had to do was finish behind him, but the old torpedo Soper was in there. Do you ever talk to Tim Harvey about that weekend, or, or Steve Soper about that one corner? Or it was, I think, 15 seconds. That all unfolded in 15 seconds, wasn't it? Yeah, it did. Uh, well, actually, it had gone over for a couple of laps before, but the very the culmination of the whole thing was 15 seconds. And yes, Steve and I still are, are good friends today. I mean, I would consider inviting him for dinner. Uh, would I invite Tim Harvey for dinner? Probably not. I mean, I had a great uh, Jim Bamber, who used to do the cartoons in Autosport. Jim did me a cartoon Christmas card to send out that year, which was the Listerine BMW on top of a bonfire. And me with my arm around Steve saying, come on to the, to the barbecue, Steve. And he's going, oh, you're really nice, you're talking to me. And I take him around the corner and here's this burning BMW on top of the, bon of the bonfire. So, listen, it happened. It's probably what made touring cars as 
visually approachable as they currently are. It made the front pages of everything. It was all over every bit of media you could possibly get. And 20, year, 20 odd years later, people still remember it, which is quite staggering. He runs into me, it takes me straight into barriers. I mean, what are we doing here? Is this stock car racing or is this motorsport? He might get away with that in Germany where he might be Mr. Superstar. But this is clean. The man's an animal.